you mentioned um, earlier the unfortunately reality that many Jews have either negative or ambivalent feelings to Korbanoth and the return of the, the Avodah. So how, how do you make sense of the statements that Rob Cook made with regard to vegetarianism and Korbanoth? We should probably do a, a separate shiur on this on this topic. In some of the early writings of uh, Rav Kook, from uh, I think it was when he was still in Boisk in uh, Estonia, he wrote this. Uh, he 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 writes there at length about uh, the possibility of a future Sanhedrin uh, discussing such a matter. He doesn't say it will be so. He writes about the, uh, such a possibility uh, and explains how, what the uh, Torah rationale and logic behind such a thing might be. And he also discusses, uh, again, as a possibility, yeah, the idea of uh, n not consuming uh, uh, meat. He does not say anything uh, with regards to Korban Pesach, by the way, which uh, I, I, he did not have in, in did not have in mind. It seems to me at all. But uh, he, he does not say anything more than there is. It is a possibility, and it would have to be uh, discussed and uh, looked into and debated by by a future Sanhedrin. And if such a thing, if such a discussion were to take place and the decision were to be such and such, then that, that would be binding. So that's what Rav Cook says. He doesn't say anything beyond that. Um, that particular period also in Rav Cook's life, he was relatively young. Um, he was uh, possibly under 40 or just around 40 years old at that time was a very, uh, I think, when, when one looks at the various writings of Rav Kook, one looks at the, at the dates when these things were written, much of which we are able to know nowadays. Perhaps in the, in the past we were not able to know when, when various things were written, but today we do know with, with uh, certainty when most of the material was written. Uh, one sees that at that time, that was a very volatile period in Rav Kook's thinking, very, very creative, very imaginative, uh, very... Uh, Radical, even. It's my impression that with regards to some of these ideas, he uh, did not necessarily think the same way 20, 30 years later. Again, this is a longer discussion, but uh, we, we cannot uh, base the, the entire thrust of the Torah on... Uh, the, the ideas of, 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 of any particular individual, no matter how great, written in, 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 in such a speculative style and fashion, quite explicitly stating it's all speculative. Um, this, this cannot be uh, the uh, def defining uh, theme of our, of our Torah perception and understanding. The Torah was not given the day that Rav Kook was born, did not uh, come to an end. The discussion of the Torah and the learning, the study of Torah and Hidushim in the Torah and uh, pondering and dwelling upon its ideas did not come to an end when Rav Kook left this world. Uh, I don't say this, of course, with any, uh, any intention whatever of uh, belittling Rav Kook. Quite, quite, that is the furthest thing from my mind. Rav Kook was something was someone very, very unique and special and uh, great, far, far beyond uh, the usual definitions of of Torah greatness. But again, we are not required to accept every every idea, every notion that every individual had, every chidush, every uh, musing. This is really more of a musing more than anything else, and. Uh, it certainly cannot be considered uh, any kind of basis for 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 making uh, any major change to to any halacha. 
as he, as Rav Kook himself says, it was something that a, a Sanhedrin would have to discuss. And who says they would all think the same? They would all agree, whatever the, whatever it may be. We we cannot really in, uh, see into the future with regards to such things. With regards to Korban Pesach, it is very difficult to see how how one could imagine that uh, the, the Miswa of Korban Pesach could be could be uh, nullified, undone, or simply uh, be put on on hold in some way. It's, I think it's impossible to imagine such a thing. When all is said and done, uh, the Korban Pesach is is eaten, is consumed. It is a Torah mandated. Uh, family or a full number of families, a, a barbecue, not in the simple um, mundane sense, but a, a holy barbecue. That is what the Korbanoth Shalamim are always. That is their, that is their purpose. It is part of Avodat Hashem to, to, to make special meals and sit together and, and uh, consume the, the, uh, the meat of, the, of those Korbanoth. As, as 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 it is with regards to Maser Sheni, as it is with regards to Shalamim and all all the uh, Hagim. If you want to uh, check for a moment, if you wish to, uh, by way of a reality check, see if is this how uh, many Jews feel uh, like? Uh, is this a way in which many Jews feel they would like to celebrate uh, their uh, independence, their freedom, etc.? Well, then just. Uh, Go outside on Yom Ha'asma'uth in Israel and uh, see what people are doing. There's no halacha. Uh, there's no miswa in the Torah or soferim to make a barbecue on Yom Ha'asma'uth. On He Bi'iyar or any other day, Gimel Bi'iyar or Wal Bi'iyar, whatever day it, it, it uh, is celebrated on. And yet that's what people are doing. Why? Mishum she'en simha ela bevasar v'yayin. That is the statement, the explicit statement. You, and if you don't know that statement in the Talmud, that's what people instinctively understand, that when you feel that it's time to celebrate, you, you break out the wine and the beer and, the, and, and you barbecue meat. That is the way of normal, healthy human beings. Anyone who imagines that human nature should somehow be radi radically uh, uh, reconfigurated, uh, okay, well, good luck to you perhaps, but, uh, but no thank you. That's uh, that's not, not. I don't think that's necessary. I don't think it's desirable. That's not how the world should work. That is normal and correct for Jews to want to do that. And and really, in any many ways, you can see what many people do on on uh, Yom Ha'asma'uth as a kind of substitute for what we should be doing on Yudan al It's just done a couple of weeks later. Uh, Three weeks later, perhaps. That is that is the, the way of of the world. And simchara bevasar Normal people express uh, a festive mood, and when there is a true reason for celebration, based on the Torah, uh, having a special meal, such as a sudath purim. Another example: you have a sudath purim. What does Rambam write about sudath purim? Let us have a look. <coughs> Rambam writes here in the Choth Mechila Perek Beth. When he speaks about the uh, Sudath Purim, Rambam writes here in Halacha Yod Dalet, Mitzvah Yom Arba Asar Livne Kefarim Vayorot, Yom Hamisha Asar Livne Kerachim. These two days, Yod Dalet Tethwal of Adar, depending on where you are, Liyot Yeme Mishte Was Simcha. These are to be days of of feasting and celebration. Umishlo Ahmanot. Uh, and uh, charity to those who cannot afford to make a proper se'udah, uh, 
so they will be able to do so. So because it's very important they do so. And Mishloach Manoth, which is uh, exchanging gifts of food, etc., with one's friends and neighbors. And Ramam goes on to say here in Halachat El Zayin, Kesad Hovat Seudazo, Sheilchal Basar, with a Ken Seudana, that one eat a, 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 a special meat meal based on meat. Sheilchal Basar says Ramam, with a Ken Seudana. And have a, a, a meal which is a, well, well beyond the the norm, normal meal that a person has on a regular day, kafiyah shatim sayado, based on his uh, his uh, economic abilities, his financial status. Wushotayayin and to drink wine. Actually, yishtakir. We've discussed this before. Doesn't mean to get drunk on much. It means to to be somewhat slightly um affected by the by the wine by the alcohol and uh, will follow him and this will cause him to become drowsy and and not off etc you see right, explicitly again basar if a person tells me well i'd rather have a uh, a uh, <clears throat> a uh, broccoli casserole instead well, that, that's what you like. That's that's it's your favorite type of food. Vakasha, go for it. No problem. But don't tell me that's what most people think. It's not. It's not what most people think. It's not what most people want. It's not what most be, uh, people may have no problem at all with a broccoli uh, casserole. But um, but it's not an expression, not a classic expression, not a typical expression of celebration and rejoicing and feasting. It just isn't. Thank you, Rabbi Bar Chaim. We would like to encourage our viewers to share these videos with friends and send in your responses. We would also like to suggest the following opportunity to our viewers. If you identify with Rabbi Bar Chaim's message and would like to sponsor or dedicate a video interview with the rabbi in honor or memory of a loved one, if you would like to obtain Birkon Nusach Eretz Israel, or invite the rabbi for a speaking engagement, please email us at office at machonchilo.org.